Welcome to Cloud Gaming Battle. I'm Little Quick. Today we're visiting Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker on Shadow. Before you shadow us on this end walkthrough, subscribe to keep abreast of the latest news, gameplay, tips, and comparisons. To avoid as many spoilers as possible for this new story-driven game, I'm only going to show footage of zones announced in the release patch notes as well as the first dungeon. As mentioned in our recent Final Fantasy XIV on Maximum Settings video, the game has had unparalleled growth, especially in recent times. As such, whether you're playing on the cloud or not, the infamous post-launch queue will slow you down unless you're playing during non-peak hours. Between the evenings of December 7th and 8th, the servers came down for an emergency update for three hours. This was to ease the stress on the login servers. Square Enix was fixing faulty code in their login lobby software and reappropriating hardware from their testing servers to the main login servers in order to prevent the queues from removing players who are waiting. Regardless, the queues are long and Endwalker continues to suffer from success. After a solid 90 minutes of waiting in line, we were finally able to play. Final Fantasy XIV is currently unsupported by most of the curated platforms in cloud gaming. You won't see it on Stadia, GeForce Now, or Boosteroid. Currently, the only way to enjoy Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker on the cloud is via PC rental services like Shadow or Maximum Settings. Final Fantasy is a very large and expansive game and requires a minimum of 65 gigabytes just to attempt installation. One of the annoying limitations of Shadow is the measly 256 gigabytes of space afforded to users for all software on their virtual PC. This includes operating system and mandatory Shadow code for streaming. I was forced to remove other games to make room, as usual. Shadow's download speed fluctuates somewhat, but the initial installation of Final Fantasy XIV took roughly an hour. As with any massive game on a PC rental service, first-time setup is going to take a bit. Something I failed to mention during the Maximum Settings video is that Square Enix may force a password change upon you when logging into a cloud service for the first time. The act of logging into your account on a cloud PC miles away from your normal location can flag your account for this failsafe. If your account is flagged, follow the instructions to change your password and access to your account will be restored immediately. When installing on a new PC, it's highly recommended to upload your settings to Final Fantasy XIV's built-in settings tool. This will transfer your heads-up display and related settings to your cloud PC and save yourself the time of rebuilding all your item sets, controls, and other miscellaneous features. Using this tool will make your HUD go from dud to stud in no time at all. Final Fantasy XIV is a game built to be capable of play on lower-end PCs, as well as the PlayStation 4 and 5. Any tier of Shadow will run this game well. The stream quality was mostly solid for several hours of gameplay, and I felt very comfortable playing in Shadow. Comfortable enough to turn off my heads-up display and record some more cinematic clips for all the Cloud Warriors to enjoy. I played in a constant 1920x1080 high-definition stream. Settings were turned all the way up, and I experienced absolutely no hardware lag or crashes. Any quality reduction in play was solely due to my connection to Shadow. However, even with higher stream bandwidth settings, after a very long session, in my case, just trying to get through the queue, you may experience stream stuttering in the form of audio popping. This can be fixed with a quick stream restart in the Shadow menu. Furthermore, just like maximum settings, if there was any drop in internet speed stability, the picture could get grainy. This happened a few times during play, though I don't know if the problem was on my end or Shadow's. Once during play, I was forcibly disconnected from Shadow. The reconnect happened quite quickly, and my controls were not functioning correctly for a few seconds after that reconnect. I was not engaging anything particularly dangerous at the time, so luckily it cost me nothing in-game. Still, it's worth mentioning. The controls in the game were extremely responsive. As Final Fantasy XIV does not usually require split-second controls except in very specific fights, it was hard to tell, but I had no issues whatsoever except during that disconnect. A personal issue, mirroring my problems in the maximum settings stream, was my inability for the game to recognize shift plus numpad buttons. This is a problem that is unique to my preferred keybinds, so it may not affect everyone, but I had to change my settings to use control plus numpad in order to use all of my abilities. As Shadow is a monthly subscription, unlike Maximum Settings, which is pay per minute, you'll likely get more bang for your buck if you intend to binge the game in large amounts over the cloud. The general rule is if you intend to play over 10 hours a week on your cloud platform, Shadow is going to be the better option. In conclusion, Final Fantasy XIV is great on Shadow. 
Barring the annoying space limitations of the platform, the setup was easy, the payment structure is conducive to binge play, and the game plays very well. I highly recommend it. For the latest news, tips, gameplay, and comparisons on cloud gaming, including Shadow, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned right here to the only place you can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle. Little Quick, signing out.